Hello and welcome to this new channel where I will talk through our home solar and battery storage installation. My name's Keith and through the coming videos I'll talk through what we've had installed, how it's performing, what we are saving in terms of energy costs and ultimately was it the right investment to make. Questions are welcome, please leave your comments below. So as we all know in the UK, NG costs have been rising significantly over the course of the last 12 to 18 months, with this video being recorded in the autumn of 2022. And that headline from the BBC just encapsulates the concerns people have about paying their bills and the choices some people are having to make in terms of how they heat and power their house. And as you can see uh, from this graph that's taken from the Cornwall Insights um, website, you can see that over the course of the last 10 years, we've had relatively stable uh, tariff costs. So you can see on the left hand side, the retail cost per annum uh, for uh, energy tariffs. And that was pretty stable until January 2021, where it started to increase. And then we get into this year, where as you can see that yellow line, where the average fixed tariff has gone through the roof. There is no reasonable fixed tariff available anymore and as such everyone's looking at how they can cut down their bills and we're all recognizing that the days of cheap energy and in terms of fixed rate cheap energy are not going to come back anytime soon and solar energy is one way to reduce the reliance on the grid by using the energy that you can generate from your roof and as an example this is some analysis on the cost that we've seen based on our current usage within our house. So we live in a three bed detached house. We have two adults, two teenagers. I myself work from home pretty much full time. So there's always someone in the house running PCs, TVs, dishwashers, the tumble dryer during mainly autumn and winter and washing machines, for example. Our fixed tariff rate actually ended January of this year. And we went on to the standard rate. There were no viable fixed rates available. So you can see that for our last full year on the fixed rate, we used around 6,351 kilowatts of electricity, and that cost 1,141 pounds and 67 pence in total. By going on to the standard rate uh, for the same usage, our annual charge based on last year's usage would theoretically have increased by 192 pounds. But that was when we moved to that rate in February of this year. Obviously, the cost of electricity has started to significantly increase over the course of 2022, and this is due to the price cap that we're now on being calculated every quarter. So our theoretical annual bill on the April price increase increased by £757 per annum, and at one point before the revised government cap was applied in October 22, we were looking at an annual theoretical bill uh, based on last year's usage that was three times the amount of last year. So as of today's rate with the new uh, cap that's been put in place uh, and you can see that in terms of the unit cost and standing charge and I'm excluding the £400 government rebate that's being paid back to us theoretically um, but we're looking at a bill that has doubled on our last fixed rate tariff. So suddenly solar becomes more attractive because the return on investment is probably halved just through the price increases in the last 18 months. Now, I recognise this isn't an option available to all. You may be in a house or a flat uh, that is leased, so you don't necessarily have uh, the permissions to install solar, uh, and it could just not be financially viable. And it, it would be a mistake for me not to acknowledge that I'm in a lucky position that I've been able to make use of some savings to be able to finance this. So it's a huge decision to make and for us our concern was can solar work based on the way our house is orientated? And this is the reason why. We have a south facing garden and it is a sun trap. However as you can see from this photo the ridge of our house actually runs north to south. We have a gable end at the back of the house. This means that our roof pitches are facing east and west. However, these pitches 
aren't obscured. They're not, or well, we're not surrounded by buildings that will block the sun uh, to those roofs. Uh, and while we have a large magnolia tree in the back garden to the west side of the house, it is regularly pruned and kept aside, as you can see uh, from this image here after it had been pruned. And in terms of where we're positioned, apart from our neighbours to the east, the west side of the house doesn't really have anything to block the view of the sun. And all the houses around us are of a similar build, same height, and are spaced fairly well apart. And also note that we're not exactly east and west facing. And this is important when you look at the path the sun takes during the course of the year, which we'll come to shortly. But with that, in the spring of 2022, I registered my interest uh, on the local Solar Together scheme. This is a UK nationwide scheme with a number of local councils. And once Solar Together has selected a supplier, I received my quote initially for solar panels on the west pitch of the roof with battery storage. And given that we do get the sun on the east pitch in the morning and particularly early on during the height of summer and then obviously throughout the day until the sun moves to the west side of the house, I elected to add an additional set of solar panels on the east pitch. And this was our proposed system. So we have 16 panels in total. Uh, which are nine panels on the west facing roof, seven panels on the east facing roof. Each panel is 385 watts capable in terms of generation, which means our total generation capability is 6.16 kilowatts. We've also got five pylon batteries, uh, they are in the roof, and the total storage capacity of those is 12 kilowatts. And then we have a Solis 5G inverter that allows us to obviously switch between. Uh, battery power, uh, grid power and solar power. And for those that are interested this is the installation in the form of a diagram. So our installers forecast that the reduction of grid import will probably be around 60% of our typical usage based on the uh, system that we elected to have installed. As you can see, that equates to a reduction of £1,417 based on our current tariff projected against last year's usage of just over 6.3 kilowatts. I'm sorry, 6,300 kilowatts. Uh, and that was forecast to be uh, in total £2,300 based on our current tariff. So. On that basis, our return on investment should be around 9 to 10 years. And that's before we see any summer generation and also the ability of being able to sell some of our excess solar back to the grid, which I'll come to later. It should be said this is a conservative estimate by the installer and there are other considerations as well that could obviously improve performance. And the key one is in terms of the orientation of the house. Now, as you can see, we are slightly off a perfect north-south alignment. We're also in the southeast on the Essex coast. So weather-wise, we do get a lot of sunshine hours and reduced rainfall compared to the rest of the country. And being by the coast, we do get clear skies a lot of the time. And the path that the sun takes uh, during the year is also a factor in terms of the way it tracks across the sky and it's where it rises and where it sets. So using timeanddate.com I can get sun data for my location. I can see that over the course of the year where in the sky the sun rises and sets and its elevation and also how long the solar day is. And the following is a representation of where the sun rises and falls throughout the year and the elevation and length of the solar day. So for example in January the sun rises to the southeast of the house and sets in the southwest. And with it being in the middle of our winter, the sun rises around 8 a.m., doesn't really get above 20 degrees elevation from the horizon and sets at around 4 p.m. As you can see, as we move through to spring, the days get longer and the position that the sun rises and sets from actually gets further north. So once you get to March and April time, the sun 
is rising in the east, it's setting in the west, the day is longer, and the sun's elevation from the horizon is nearer to 50 degrees in terms of its position in the sky. So this means by the time you get to the height of summer in June, and we're near enough at the longest day of the year, you can see for June, with the sun rising in the northeast, it arises around 4.30 a.m. and it sets in the northwest around 9 p.m. And in terms of solar panel exposure on a clear day, sunny day, or even when it's quite cloudy, the amount of sunlight daylight actually hitting those panels, especially past noon on the west pitch, should be quite significant. And during the remainder of the summer, it doesn't change all that much. Obviously the day starts to get shorter and the sun starts to rise and set further south. And once you get to September, then this installation should still be performing relatively well for the solar day, as we're still having the sun rise due east and setting due west. So even during the autumn, we should still see some generation until we get to the winter again. And even by this time of the year, although the sun isn't as strong, we still get clear and crisp and bright winter days where we should get some benefit from the solar panels. So, on that basis, how has the installation performed in its first month? As a reminder, this is where the sun rises and sets in the middle of the month in September and the length of the solar day. The installation of the panels was completed in early September 2022 and was switched on at around 1pm on the 7th. And as you can see, even for half a day on that first day, we generated nearly 10 kilowatts of electricity and across the month we were regularly generating between 10 to 15 kilowatts per day. Total generation for the month was 352 kilowatts and our best day was the 17th of September where we generated nearly 25 kilowatts. So if we take the best day, uh, the 17th, uh, this is the dashboard from Solis Cloud. This is uh, the from the inverter data. And this shows the statistics for the 17th of September, which was our best generation day of the month. In terms of generation, you can see a clearly defined generation curve. It's pretty consistent generation throughout the day. And as I mentioned, we had 24.7 kilowatts generated from the solar panels, of which we used 5.7 kilowatts in the house. We sent two kilowatts to the battery and 17 kilowatts was exported to the grid. And we also used that seven, uh, that two kilowatts rather, uh, from the battery along with another seven kilowatts that we imported from the grid. So our usage may look odd, as we effectively sent 69 of our generation to the grid but the 17th was a Saturday we were obviously out of the house most of the day so our house usage was low and if we'd had the ability to sell the excess solar imported to the grid through Octopus Outgoing Agile uh, Octopus is our provider then we could have been paid uh, for the energy export and if we look at our electricity usage split between grid import, uh, battery usage and solar usage across the mo month. From what you can see here, and in case you can't see it, the blue is the grid import, the orange is the battery usage, and the yellow is the solar generation usage. And you can see from the first week, we had virtually 100% uh, imported from the grid. This was because the installation hadn't been commissioned. And then from the 7th of September, our panels and battery storage were in operation. And you can see from this, the 14th was our best day because we had virtually 100% consumption of our own generated power. And just to show the split between solar generation usage in terms of panels and battery and grid import, for the month, 56% of our house usage was on generated power, which again, when you consider the first week of the month was 100% grid import, that's quite spectacular in my view. So with that, did we see a benefit? Well, despite solar only being available from the 7th of September, we had that 56% of our own power usage was from the solar panels and either to the battery and then reused uh, or directly from the solar panels. 
and the, we did generate 352 kilowatts of electricity and we used 343 kilowatts of that and our generated usage in terms of from the panels and from the batteries would have cost an additional 95 pounds and 53 pence if we were not using solar and just taking that against our standing charge and unit cost so another point to consider if we'd been able to use the outgoing octopus agile that month we could have been paid for our exported energy as well the grid import cost for september was 86 pounds because we imported 270 kilowatts so the total cost had we not had solar generation and the battery usage just by taking that 95 pounds and 53 pence and the actual cost from the grid import would have been 181 pounds and 52 pence for the month so we're seeing a definite saving and this is just the first month so with that we will continue looking at this over the coming months uh, next month will be in terms of october will be our first full month where we've got solar panel generation and battery storage so it'd be interesting to see where we are with that and over the coming months as well we'll obviously hopefully uh, get approval to export our excess solar generation and then we'll start seeing some income from that as well which again will go towards the uh, return on investment uh, that we've made and hopefully as we get uh, further into the year and we start seeing more data come through we'll then be able to talk about what we're seeing in terms of the cost savings that we're making particularly through the winter and into the spring and summer next year um, but also uh, what we think the length of time will be before we've recouped the cost of installing this so i hope this was informative and useful to you uh, if you'd like to see more please obviously subscribe and uh, we'll see you next month thank you